Welcome back. Share prices of Canada's big six banks have rallied since late October and rallied through the recent fourth quarter earnings season. Our next guest, however, is a longtime analyst in the sector and currently does not have a single buy rating on any of the big six banks. Let's bring in Nigel D'Souza. He's financial services analyst at Veritas Investment Research. Thanks, Nigel. It was good to talk to you on the banks. Thanks for having me on. Uh, you, uh, you don't have any buy ratings and you're, yeah, part of it is your, your views and your, your knowledge on uh, value, bank valuations and the credit cycle. Explain. That's right. So if you look at credit cycles through the last 20 years and the valuations of the banking sector, what we typically see is that bank valuations bottom right before credit losses peak. And that goes back right to the financial crisis where credit losses peaked in the second quarter of 2009 and the valuations bottom in the first quarter. And we saw that dynamic play out both during the energy crisis in 2016 and the pandemic. Uh, and now we're in another credit cycle, we think. And typically, when we look at credit losses, they peak within two years of the household debt servicing ratio, which is the amount of income that goes towards principal and interest payments. Mm -hmm. When that peaks, within two years, we typically see credit losses peak. We aren't yet at the peak in the debt service ratio. Assuming we get rate cuts later this year, that ratio probably peaks in the first half of this year. That would put the peak in credit losses sometime in 2025 or 2026. Mm -hmm. We think it's 2025 because the banks have a new accounting standard where they can recognize credit losses on loans that have yet to be impaired. So if we expect credit losses to peak in the first half of 25, that would mean that valuations are likely to bottom towards the end of this year, 2024. So where does that debt servicing ratio stand now? It seems to be one of those numbers that marches ever upwards, no matter what Bank of Canada officials have told Canadian consumers in the past. That's right. So it's sitting at around 15 percent. That matches the previous cycle highs, both in 2019, right before the pandemic, and also the peak that we saw in 2007 during the financial crisis. That is probably going to head higher. We think it could top out closer to 16 percent. That's because rates are still elevated. You have mortgages renewing, uh, rolling over and renewing at higher rates. That's going to push debt servicing costs up. So it probably peaks above where it peaked in the prior cycle. Uh, but then if we get the rate cuts as expected, it should level off and start declining towards the end of this year. And that sets us up for getting closer to the peak in those credit losses. Remind us what we saw in the most recent quarter of bank results with respect to credit losses. And which figures do you uh, uh, pay most attention to? There's provision for credit losses, there's gross impaired loans and so on. There's several numbers that's, that paint a picture of, of a bank's uh, credit situation. Ultimately, what matters is provisions for credit losses, and they're a function of impaired loans. The higher level of gross impaired loans you have, the more likely you're going to take higher levels of provisions. But ultimately, what matters is provisions. That hits the P&L for banks. What we're seeing is a normalization of credit losses for retail lending or personal lending, and that's due to high interest rates. On the commercial side, it's still idiosyncratic. It's driven by uh, one-offs in either commercial real estate, automotive, healthcare, agriculture. So just idiosyncratic factors, nothing systemic yet in commercial, but if the macroeconomic environment weakens, you could see that pick up, as well as maybe higher unemployment drive, more credit losses for uh, consumer lending. And you said in a recent note that you think current bank valuations are pricing in either a soft landing scenario or even a no landing scenario, which would seem, if I understand, we understand that phrase correctly, to disavow any notion that the economy is slowing down at all. And therefore, I guess you're saying that the market is not pricing in any type of uh, uh, significant increase in credit losses. That's right. I think right now the bank valuations reflect both a premium to a soft landing scenario, which would be a mild recession, and credit losses moving up um, modestly. And right now you need upside for the banks to be driven by a no landing scenario materializing, which would be one, as you mentioned, where we don't enter a recession. Growth perhaps even accelerates, and we don't see credit losses uh, exceed current expectations. So that really is the best case scenario for banks. It's possible, but one that I don't think is necessarily the most likely scenario. And for that reason, the risk return profile for the banking sector is unattractive. There are risks to this outlook of a soft and landing. One risk is that, yes, maybe the economy and unemployment fares better than expected, but that could lead to inflation being stickier and maybe even reaccelerating. That could lead to rates staying elevated for longer or maybe even rate hikes being on the table. That's one potential risk. The other risk is that we don't get a soft landing or no landing and we get a hard landing where the economy slows down, we enter a recession, and unemployment moves higher. Right now, neither of those risks are really priced into the valuation of the bank stocks. So if we get the best possible scenario for no landing, there's upside. But any other scenario of a soft or hard landing, 
could lead to downside risk for the sector. Higher provisions for credit losses and higher credit losses mean less profit growth for the banks. What type, of, you must believe that the market is pricing in more profit growth than these banks can achieve. What type of profit growth, earnings per share growth are you, are you factoring in for the banks? So we think there's going to be, uh, on the whole, the sector is going to have a decline in earnings per share, probably high single digits year over year. Uh, it, the main difference between our expectations and consensus is really the outlook for credit losses. In soft, no landing, hard landing scenarios, of course that means different things for margins, loan growth, capital markets, wealth management. But what really drives earnings and the most important factor is credit loss position. That has the biggest delta on the outlook for earnings. And we expect credit losses to be a little bit higher than what's baked into consensus. And consensus is moving towards our expectation, but not there yet. So that's what's leading to our outlook for soft earnings.